Most people talk about leaving America, but you up and did it. I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with America. <laughs> it's like the bad boyfriend that you keep coming back to. I worked in politics and journalism, and I've lost faith in politics. I like a skeptic. I've been working on this stuff all my life. But when you go to Detroit, you're going to see people taking responsibility for their own lives using restorative practices, like revolution by conversation. If we can encourage people to replicate it, we can transform America. And I'm convinced you'll like it. <laughs>
When you come and you have kids that don't know anybody, that don't know anything, they don't have that foundation. And so you're trying to add to these kids and also educate them at the same time. The students really do mimic our conversations. So if we began yes. to really yes. use the language. Amen. We even had a circle where a student had some trauma and she brought her mother in. She used restorative practice in her language with her mother to the point where she said, you talk to me, you don't talk with me. In our restorative circles, we have teachers in there monitoring us. So like they are supposed to report back to the ministry, but our problem is things never change. Nope. And we continue to say, oh, we need this, but they're like, oh yeah, I just complaining. Okay, mm -hmm. you guys think that we don't care because we like act out in certain ways. And for us, it's like, what we need is for them to listen to us. Okay. But they don't take the time to get to know us. Every problem that even we have goes in one ear and out the other. Principal and the administration look to me as I have a higher say than people who get in trouble. But so if somebody wants to come to you with an issue, it should be treated equal. Okay. Staff, administration provide an opportunity for student voice. All student voice. One of the things I heard as a rumor meal was that some just thought that we did not reinforce discipline. In the midst of the staff changeover, we end up having a few um, substitute teachers here. Some people were not able to embrace it, um, which caused them to pretty much say, send the kids to the office because they don't know much about it. Mm -hmm. Because they view suspension as discipline. Mm -hmm. But that's punishment, right? Yeah, that's right? So we have to change their thinking about the words. It does not mean that we don't honor discipline. And sometimes we're not controlling, but RP is about control, but not controlling. It's about balancing support with that control, right? Encouraging them to reflect. What was their reaction? What was their response? Just in everyday life, always. Having a high level of expectation and a high level of support. If you didn't provide any support and you didn't have any expectations, that was the neglect. But being restorative meant we just don't go in and give discipline and do the consequences. There's a process to restore their practice and how we set rituals in their classroom because students love structure. As far as their behavior, where are they at on the compass of shame? You have to understand what happened first. Then we repair it. And I think that just the lack of that information um, kind of was like a barrier for us. But a few thought it was your job. Mm -hmm. to do right. restorative practice, Absolutely. not theirs, right? right? Mm -hmm. And the real beauty is that as a teacher, you're the one who reinforces restorative practice. Yeah. Also, some thought that it was taking away time from teaching. No, it That's gives right. you more time mm -hmm. to teach, right? Mm -hmm. But it requires practice. I love my man in the mirror scenario. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see change take place, look at the man in the mirror. I look at myself when it comes to problems. I look in the mirror and say, what should you have done differently, right? You know, sometimes we're waiting for somebody else to come in and solve the problem for us. But in a restorative framework, a lot of the solutions are within, us and within our groups. So if you think about last year, what more could you have done? Sometimes if we're practitioners, we don't necessarily use it in our daily lives or with each other. With the conversations that I had with teachers, looking back, you know, I probably did not allow that to be a restorative conversation. Restorative practice, sometimes it can be uncomfortable. Yeah. And being mindful of that when you wonder why that teacher didn't do what they know as far as restorative practice. I've learned this from you, if there's smoke, there's fire. So <laughs> when the smoke was going, um, that was a great opportunity to go into the classrooms and meet with the teachers. Where do you need support? I see there that uh, some of your students are coming down more often than not. What do you need so we can help you to be comfortable? It comes with uh, trust. People are uncomfortable, feeling exposed. You have to be willing to be vulnerable, right? We've got to think about how we can respect them being uncomfortable and help them begin build trust in the process to become more comfortable. We have to examine ourselves first to make change. Okay, we're going to end by doing this. Put our hands together. Join me in saying that I have one hand to give. I have one hand to give. I have one hand to receive. I have one hand to receive. Working in a team process 
There is nothing that we can't do. I am because we are. So I love you all. I appreciate you. It's going to be a great year. I promise that. Be blessed. Yeah.